How's it going, everybody? I'm the Poco Cavana, and welcome back to Doki Doki. Who's right to write a poem? I think I'm rather. Alright. Incongruent, loud, lollipop, despise, electricity, marshmallow, boop, climax, sunset, peaceful. Oh, boop again. Fuck. I forgot I was supposed to be writing these down already. Alright, there we go. Melancholy, happiness, atone, starscape, twirl, whirlwind, ocean, entropy. Rose, family rose, I guess. Memories, anime, anime for life. Oh, what did I do on the last one? Ah, oh, I forgot again. Frig. What was the last one I did? Not anime, but the one before that. I'm recording this at 5.30 in the morning. I'm gonna write down Rose. I don't think that's what it was, but I think that was one of the options. So we're going with it. Alright, peace, judgment, clouds, pow, insight, sensation, anger, summer, bed, desire, bed. Beds are irreplaceable. Whisper, play, sunny, ambient, skirt, portrait, puppy, marriage, blanket, hurt, blankets. A mother fluffin' blanket. Warm McKayzite. Whistle, wonderful, uncanny, analysis, playground, heartbeat, sadness, bliss, lucky, vivid. Lucky. I have no luck in my life. I could use some lucky. Dream, hopelessness, forgive, unstable, love, flying, nibble, existence, raindrops, unending. Flying. Sounds good. Actually, dream. I'm gonna lie. Yeah, dream. Depression, together, broken, disowned, tears, promise, flee, sweet, warm, massacre. Fuck, let's go with massacre. Yeah, I knew that I was the person who was gonna jump on that one. Fear, passion, milk, prayer, friends, milks. Cause food is king. Vanilla, intellectual, heaven sent, lipstick, jump, comfort, sing, disaster, destiny, vibrant. Vanilla. I just spelled vanilla with two N's. That's how you fail English, kids. Kiss, spinning, smile, unrestrained anxiety, cry, valentine, color, ribbon, treasure. Yar har har. Treasure it is. I... Laugh, funny, romance, time, candy, shame, universe, contamination, fester, covert, candy. Am I even halfway through? Yeah, that was 12. Alright, yeah. Dance, giggle, feather, dazzle, rain cloud, landscape, childhood, explode, clumsy, vacation. Um, hmm. Dance? I guess. Well, this slowly turns out all these poems are actually supposed to just psychologically figure you out, and then they're going to give you the most messed up scenario possible because of what you decided to go with. Special vitality, nightgown, fancy, inferno, inferno. Disco Inferno. Chocolate, frightening, joy, dolky dolky. Determination, cage, pain, sugar, infinite, vertigo, sugar. Uncontrollable, party, extreme, papa, grief, misfortune. Melody, calm, mouse, hair. Uh, um, mouse? Eternity, swimsuit, meager, journey, shopping, sparkle, pure, alone, death, unrequited. What oh, pure? If you do happy things, it won't be a so bad. Fireworks, lust, skipping, music, proof, kitty, jumpy, holiday, games, games. Games are life. Flower, philosophy, parfait. That's how you say that word, right? Nah, screw it. Crimson, waterfall, fun, lazy, imagination, rainbow, empty. Parfait.
Fireflies cheer, infall infallible, in effulgent, aura, precious, hope, cute, dark, charm, aura. Went all over the place this time. Oh, that was the last one! Okay, cool. I'm gonna read this poem as soon as they ask us to read it. Aw, oh, man! I'm the last one here again! Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club won't be here at all if it wasn't for you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to hop out for the festival too. Can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Were you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but the whole day of school we get to play and eat and all kinds eat all kinds of delicious food. Yeah, that sounds like a great time actually. You sound a bit like Siori all of a sudden. Monica, they usually have fried squid. Squid. That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean, you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Ma Ika. That's not how you say my name at all. Oh. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Well, that ain't different. Never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Fine, fine. Your reaction aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk up. Hey, Sayori! I wave my hand in front of her face. You're spacing out again. Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Is everything alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sorry, it shows a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dis yeah, dispersed, with everyone back to their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been- That, that, that. Since they've been preparing them for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach a preachata. Monica. God dang, this is a train wreck of words. Not this, just <laughs> Who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Poco, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? And what do you mean? What way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little too much. Reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. You think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm supposed... But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Poco. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she never, she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop in now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Are you sure about that? She seems like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person... With the person of interest. No, oh, man, they hate me. What do you mean by that? I'm saying maybe the thing on her mind is you, Poco. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say, say too much, but... Siori talks about you more than anything else, you know? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way! Sayori is always like that. 
She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has been. You're so funny, Poco. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. You should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her, and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her, that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? It feels like I'm the one behaving out of ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Hey you! Hmm? I look up to see Natsu- da -da -da -da. Natsuki. Next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't much time, so... Sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried, I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of the of manga in her hand. That's right! Something just... came up for a minute. But we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, you can just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean... Assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically murmurs that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem big, seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Natsuki ex exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she'd go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly! If she wants you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah. I should have thought about it that way from the start. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? You don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so I was not. Jeez, if you're fine, then let's hurry up and get started already. Yeah, yeah. I pull the first volume of the Parfait Girls out from my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands and quickly turns over, turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I manage manga all the time. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you... you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. The chapter ended where Minori and Alice found... Evidently they found Monica. Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. <laughs> Did you move my manga again? Sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet. I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still there, I just had to organize it a bit. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head, I friggin' knew it! She makes a futile hop trying to figure out how to reach, the, reach her manga. Jeez. This is so inconvenient. I'm moving these back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves, and besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Natsuki. There's a stool on the wall over there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. 
I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? Just, just, just a little bit. Just a wee bit short. I mean, I knew it. Well, you know what? Just watch me. Hops on. Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because it's collapsible design. Careful. I know what I'm doing. Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki is being stubborn as usual. Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that, though. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it. I don't want your help, okay? I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me and out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have desks attached to them, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it... Oh, uh, God, that's not a good idea. I'm not sure if any of y'all have tried standing on a computer chair, but rarely does it actually end up well. It's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I'll keep my mouth shut. Yeah, you got this, Natsuki. Absolutely nothing can go wrong here. Natsuki climbs onto the chair and then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. There we go. See, I can easily do it now. Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put, put on the shelf below. The chair swivels, as it does. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting there and doing nothing? Who was it that told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. I can... I can almost see a first skirt. Anime! Okay, in this case, visual novel. I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Natsuki wraps her arms around the Parfait Girl box set, easily the largest one on the shelf. I evidently had a good run. Hey, Poco. I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry up and take this one. But then I have to let go of the chair. It's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you holding all the way back? Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. The box. What are you looking at? Uh, currently a box. You're trying to look at my... My... Natsuki's legs shake. I'm not, I was just... Natsuki, don't try... Don't try to move. Just give me the box. You set me up. Trust me, I, I can assure you, if you look in the rules of anime, visual novels, and other, I don't know, anime-related things, you'll find 100% necessary by law to have these kinds of things happen. But, I'll do it myself. The chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki. And death. The scene turns into chaos in a split second. The chair flies on. From under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. Yep. Full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. The whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Maybe I die. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight onto my chest. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. She presses her arm straight into me to prop herself up. Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Instead, it's my broken ribs. Gross, gross. A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking, sicko? Is everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly appears in. Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? 
Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez. Sorry, sorry. I'm sure you literally could have just asked Monica to do it. Or, you know, myself. Another option. Oh, and one more thing. It seems your most recent cl club member is a total pervert. I hope you're happy. I didn't... Somehow it's impossible for me to explain the whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no, my, my, oh yeah, the books have to be everywhere. It's kneeling on the floor holding one of the books that's scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. It must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it on the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she lowers her head. Well, I'm sorry, man. Natsuki, are you? No. Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partly my fault, so... Shakes her head, still looking down. I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's... it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... every day. It's so hard. I just want to... come to club and... read manga. Natsuki fell silent again. I can't press her, so I can o only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help you clean this up. I'll move the rest of the manga for you. I pick up volume 2 of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Uh, I mean... Given attempted murder... Well, I don't know. I don't exactly call that murder. You almost got yourself killed, so... I didn't expect it at all. I mean, I let go of the chair, though, so... Manslaughter? I don't know. I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Natsuki lowers her head and sti stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box up onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Shelf. Because that's a word. Alright! That should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. Thanks. It's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume one set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even though you- even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist. It's super cute. I love it. We sit in the same spot as last time as I opened the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing out things to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes in the background elements. And background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual. It's time to share poems again. I'm ready. I guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even in, you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into, you know? Since the plot's actually picking up. I told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Let's go, Natsuki. I'm sure this lovely poem will cheer them up. Natsuki reads my poem. <clears throat> Boop, rose, anime, bed, blanket, lucky, dream, massacre. Oh, I forgot I had the name. Milk, vanilla, treasure, candy, dance, inferno, sugar, mouse, pure, games, parfait, aura. Boom. What do you think? She keeps glancing at me in the back of the poem. By now she must have read it more than once. Yeah, it's uh, pretty short, like 20 words. Tops. Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good, it's really good, okay? There, I said it. Oh, well, it wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? I mean, I have all of my poems inspired by Civil War, so that's some premium stuff to get uh, ideas from. 
Sorry, for inspiration. My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. Or generally, any kind of Marvel film has been really good. I still need to watch Ragnarok, though. That shit looked good. And I want to say it. Are you trying to impress me? Obviously, you think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... Natsuki's face freezes, like she realized something. You, 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 you're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. The poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I, I have to use the bathroom. Red-faced Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Ah oh, man. Natsuki, you have to be here for other people's poems too. Not everyone can share if you go. Poku, did you do something to Natsuki? I, I, I know how this looks. Since there was an issue before, and now this on top of it? Not me! I just saw her rush it out like that. You didn't have it, you didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I can tell Monica I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Matsuki sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean, not really. You know, the massacre part. Maybe not the best. I get it. I'm still working on it. In fact, shh, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well. Already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Poco? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind. I'm kid. I'm just kidding. Don't under. Uh, I did that. That yeah, I did not understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway. How do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you didn't... You don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches a poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us noticed her re-enter the classroom. Is that a short joke? Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know? I mean, it's class share, honestly, so, uh, ha <laughs> ha. You have a bad habit of doing that. But Poco wrote this poem, and we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot the poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Poco is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just gonna hold on to this, if you insist. Oh man, can I- am I no longer, like, do I have to remake it? I- I threw it over there, I can't read it to everyone anymore. Uh, and I don't remember what's on there. Never mind. Oh, Natsuki. I'll give you the poem, but that's still not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't gone to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Poco is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Natsuki re uh, returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Well, that was my only copy. I'll be your beach. <laughs> your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight. A sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach you that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap, in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes, washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side. Your own beach. Your own escape. You'll learn to love yourself again. Okay. Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things. So I want to write something with a nice... Nice message for once. Did you write this in the bathroom? 
Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. What do you mean? Sand is horrible. It's, uh, I don't remember the quote. Ah! I should know this. What is it? It's tough. It, what? Ah! It's coarse, it gets everywhere? I don't remember how it goes. I'll put a picture with it here. Alright, future Dylan, do that. If you decide to write about the beach first, and then come up with a message later... Oh, did you? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick up a to pick a topic and have us both write about her or whatever. Can you really see her doing that too? Making us write about a simple topic and then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy? Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Oh, hey, since Monica, uh, Monica read it inside that previous scene, she no longer has to read it. That's some cool shit. Alright, Sayori. You were, you were looking down. Check out this legit 20-word poem of random words I literally looked up in the dictionary and wrote down on a piece of paper. Just for you guys. Come on, I can tell you... I can already tell you don't like it. Well, I mean, it's a bunch of random words. You don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Natsuki. I'm telling you, just dictionary and words. You didn't write this for anyone... I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. And that makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Poco. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? See you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Alright, Yuri. Supposedly you have a beach one? Well done, Poco. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. My advice has been helpful to you. Definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this, it's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid of this whole thing. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore. But it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. It's been fun getting to know everyone in their writing. I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Poco? Huh? Well, you know how I like to say that writing is very is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry I always overthink and come to these sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking. Being disliked. Jeez, okay. What am I- what am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay, here. Ahem. <clears throat> Beach. A mo- A marveled millions of- Is that say marveled? Pretty sure that's marveled. No, a marvel? I'm gonna check my god dang eyes. I'm just going with it. 
A marvel millions of years in the making. Where the womb of Earth cha chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky. An expanse of bliss. But beneath grey rolling clouds an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide claw- Yeah, claws- Comes! Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sand castles. I stand. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles. Where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line. Tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drip. Dr 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 drift forward and I return to Earth for for more. Forevermore! Aha! Word stuff! That was the train wreck right there. Not the poem, but like mm, this. I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about. But I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise she'd want to do something like that. Eh, yeah, think about it, I haven't re read Monica's poem at all. Ah, well. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request, but, well, I suppose it's not bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did someone say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Stag stagnating air is common, foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe? Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I don't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier. Everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we need to... But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all poetry pamphlets. Siori will be helping me design them. As for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, try not to scare people away. Guys, can you maybe help me come up with something for Yuri? Oh shit, uh, I thought you had something planned. Now my joke just makes me sound mean. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can't tell now. I guess I never gave Siri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder when she's not around. Uh, may... That may be the case. 
But I can't also be a leader on my own, then I can't grow as a person. Oh, okay, if I can't be a leader on my own. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? You should make some banners and decoration to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere, about that. I... I love atmosphere. She's gonna make this place look like a haunted house! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares into her desk at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be wonderful help, Yuri. Anyway, that just leaves you, Poco. The one who is truly useless! Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. But it would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You can always help me out as well. I'd re I'd be really appreciative of that. That's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's some dirty work I can still give to you. It's not like Monica is going to give me a chance, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle your baking on your own. Poka may not be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assign assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're making excuses for Poco too. What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Poco to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in- You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I'm just saying though, jeez. Can we settle this already? Yeah. Poker, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Of course. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. And everyone looks straight at me as I open up the save menu. And click this button. And then go back. Oh, wait. Uh, Sayori's a choice? What is Sayori doing in this? Probably helping out Monica anyway, right? Because that, that's what she does. I was like, co-leader, second in command, I believe. At the same time, I don't know, I kind of might want to go on the Natsuki route. Dude, they're just tiny and so cute. I kind of want to do that. Ah, uh, Natsuki. Baking sounds like it could be fun, and you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. We're making a shit ton of cupcakes, though. I'm gonna eat half of them. But we gotta make a ton. Baking is a ton of fun, you'll def definitely agree. Just a minute ago, you were saying that that's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. Sorry, Yuri. That's not- that's good. Even though Yuri is being melodramatic, it's a little hard to not feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk- talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yeah! Everything I said the performance is gonna be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Poco? Me? I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it all turns out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Natsuki starts pouting too. It's not... I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it, it might not be just that. I think that Yuri might be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help? That doesn't mean... Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look, Natsuki goes over and puts her hands down on Yuri's shoulder. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here, and and you're going to help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too, but you're going to make the atmosphere special. And that's really important uh, for the way people feel during the performances, so you need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Not really, but 
Yuri is the only one surprised. Isn't the only one surprised? Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki of all people to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for, fe for being dumb. I'm gonna do my best. And all of us are gonna make it a really great event. Yeah, yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time to head out. Wait, because I didn't share my poem with uh, Monica during the share time, did I not get a Monica writing tip of the day? Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start following Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Where are you going? We still need to figure out plans for this weekend. You literally would have gone home and realized that you didn't even have a way to contact me. Valid. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? Hm. Natsuki hands me her number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. You're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean... I just figured that since I'm the one helping, we'd be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like I could have a guy over my house. My dad would kill me. Alright, we gotta bring baking pants and you might need to bring an oven. I've been assumably living on my own on, like, microwave pizzas. It's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just need to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah! I'm really going to show you why I love baking so much. So you better look forward to it. Okay. Did you say you were going to give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act, like, in front of everyone that I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never get to bake with someone else. I've never got to bake with someone else before. First time. That's all it is, so... Alright, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you Sunday. Never mind. I can't believe this. Natsuki is going to be coming to my house Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might, what might end up happening when we're outside a skill. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this a chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. Seriously, I can't wait. It's already Sunday. Can I see? Yeah, I'll continue. Heck it. It's already Sunday. We've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different person personality. On the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. But putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Yeah, I probably should have gone with that one. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering myself. Again, we used to play so often that we'd make it a happy... Uh, yeah, a happy... A I almost said a hobbit. Whew. It's just one of those days. A habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're family. The house is quiet. Siori isn't on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange not to not for her to run down and greet me, so I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. 
Sayori. Hi, Poco. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is, a, is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations she's had for years now. If you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning. I end up cleaning it for you. Words. How come you suddenly want to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but. How did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival of preparations, right? That's true. What about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Natsuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So? Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Poco. Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. Sayori, yeah, Jesus. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. I thought she had tiny arms for a minute there. Like T-Rex arms. I, I don't know why. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really... Put me in a trap, Poco, but you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Poco? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? What? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having to spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy, without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I... Yeah, me too, bud. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there is only so much I could do. I would have tried a bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Poco. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat sw being swung against my head. That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get closer to everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why... That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right, I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Poco. There's nothing. Nothing at all. 
The only thing that could have helped us is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I, fin I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. So you're fine. Tears streaked down Zeori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Suri's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Poco, Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then it's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at, her, remain, remain at her side. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this, Poco. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. All I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Boko. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain, but your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, that's what I- it's what I want, I promise. I think that would be nice then. Yeah, Siori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day there, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. It's almost time for Natsuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her I mean, she's helping Monica right now, I guess. You know, but... Ah! I don't know what would be very, uh, if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I'll look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki's about to come over to... I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. Did I have any decisions in that? I think that was all just text, there's no point to save, but... Fuck! Alright. I spent a few minutes... I spent only a few minutes back at home anxiously awaiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me and lets me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door and let her in. Sup? Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Don't make it feel so awkward already. It's going to be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. Does everyone have red ribbons in their hair 24-7? I distract myself with little things, okay? I see you bought... Uh, brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki is carrying a large bag that's probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all the way here to find out your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. Yeah. That, that's fair. 
Alright, so uh, I have a stove. I have an oven, evidently. I don't know what the shit that is. I have a fridge and freezer. That's good. Uh, I have plates. I think those are my bowls. A table. That That's good. Tea set. I don't friggin' know what that is. I think it's plates and then a bowl on top. Lots of cupboard space, actually. Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients I didn't already have a, that I didn't already have at home. Good. I'm glad I can count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised here Natsuki suddenly said... Jesus Christ, I'm dying, mate. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. Not to give an offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality? Come on, since when did you need... Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grabbed Natsuki's... I grabbed the bag Natsuki holds out to me. This is ridiculously heavy. I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I'm impressed, Natsuki. It seems like I always underestimate you. It's because I'm small, isn't it? Kinda. Natsuki hits a fist onto my, into my chest. Jesus. Hey, hey, your size has nothing to do with it. And it's like, right into my chest, pull out my heart. Da, 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 da. You really hate being small that much. It's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like providing, proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. Ah! My hand just slid. It's fun when I get to be small, uh, small, and also better than other people. But, geez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I need to teach you. What? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you speak your mind like that. Hey. Now you are treating me like a kid. I was only trying to be a little nice nice to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature, sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Natsuki catches her words and her face turns red. Natsuki, forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. You, you should... You should have been a little more considerate too. Or I should have been, I don't know what that said. Mm -hmm. You guys think I know how to read? <laughs> no. No, I don't. No. Oh. But also! If that's what you're thinking, then you should know there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. How would you know that anyway? Trust me on this one. Gross. Hey! What was that? What's that? Yeah, that, that uh, what the fridge did I say? Oh, was that to me? Who else? Man. I should have started already. You get all sour when a girl calls you gross? Finally, I found your weakness, Poco. You got me. Words. Primarily, actually, in sentences. Please spare me. Well, if, well in sentences when I need to read them. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now. Finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Alright. This is actually where I'm going to leave today's episode. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Poco Cavana, out.